Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. My guest today is Amy Misnick. She is an entrepreneur and an investor and an advisor. She is amazing. We talk about the power of mindset and how important it is in your life and in your career and in all that you do. Um, don't forget, there's still time to register for Mass West, the Medical Affairs Strategic Summit West, which is in San Diego, September 25th and 26th. It's a premier medical affairs event for content and for networking. So for more information, just Google Mass West 2024. You can get details and register, and I would love to see you there. Hey guys, welcome to the MSL Talk podcast, a show specifically designed for MSLs and all things field medical. If you get value from these episodes, please click the subscribe button and share this with others. Tell all your friends, thank you for all your support. Amy, welcome back to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you having me back. So guys, I don't know if you're aware, but I have to start off by saying that Amy Misnick is a very, very important part of the MSL Talk podcast. As a matter of fact, you may all know this or not. She was my first ever guest on this show. It was February 17th, 2020. And we had planned it. We had talked for a while about doing the episode and kind of launching the podcast. And um, the episode was about networking for MSLs. It is to this date still the single most downloaded episode of all 218 episodes or whatever it is. And Amy's coming back after all those years. So I'm really excited. So Amy, welcome back. Thanks, Tom. I, I can't believe that was February of 2020. That is wild to me. Yeah. And kudos to you for continuing your podcast for so long and bringing so much value to so many people. And you have a new book out. I mean, it's just incredible to see the growth that you've had and the amount of people that you've helped and the careers that you've really influenced, Tom. So really the kudos is all to you. I'm Thank grateful. Thank you. I appreciate that, but this doesn't happen without people like you. And you're, you're, you're definitely have a, a, a very, very important place in, in this podcast and in my heart. And, um, and I'm just so grateful to have you back and I'm excited. And Guys, I get to share Amy with you again. She's amazing. So why don't you do a little introduction to tell everybody who you are and all that good stuff? Yeah, thanks, Tom. So Amy Misnick, I you know, really started my career uh, with J&J. &J, and so I've been in the pharma biotech sector for the majority of my career, but most recently pivoted. Um, and now I'm living the life of an entrepreneur, investor, and serve as a strategic board advisor and helping uh, some pharma and biotech companies um, on the entrepreneur side. So really excited to be here and talk about all things mindset, whether that's in life or career. It's really a topic that is near and dear to my heart, but really affects us every single day, no matter what you're doing. Me too. And and I've been wanting to do this topic for a while. And I, I talk a lot about mindset in, you know, during a lot of these episodes and on solo episodes, but I wanted to kind of dedicate one specific show just to talk about the importance of mindset. And I was like, who better? Guys, Amy's like a monster when it comes to this stuff. So the thing about mindset is it's it, it can be a broad topic um, and a broad term. So when when we say mindset, what is, what exactly does that mean to you? Yeah. For me, it's it's how you view the world and your place in it, really. It encompasses your beliefs, your values, and your overall outlook. It's how you show up. And I think it's your inner dialogue. So it shapes your actions, your reactions, and ultimately your future and how you think about that. So to me, your mindset is a choice. You can choose your mindset and you can shape it. You can evolve it and you can change it. So I think it's foundational for how you build your future and everywhere you're going. What does it mean to you? I'll tell you, it's yeah. it's everything from attitude to purpose, intention. Mindset sets the course for success or failure. Yeah. So to me, it's 
it's lifestyle. It's not just reactionary. And I think that's the one thing that m the successful people that I know and that I see have been able to do an amazing job, a masterful job on thinking about what they think about and creating a system or a process to maintain the right mindset, which brings them purpose and intention to get the things they want and meet their goals. So yeah, um, yeah that's, <laughs> that's kind of yeah. how I look at it. I love what you just said, Tom, because it, the one word that stands out to me is intention. You know, mindset is intentional and it's, it's not reactionary. It's something that you control and you can, you can shift and you can change and we can all work on every single day to improve, which I think is awesome. And it's not easy. I, I, yeah. I say this and and I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like it's just this easy thing. It it takes a lot of work um and it and it takes a lot of effort. So for you I know I know that you spend I know that you have developed a really good system of um keeping strong mindset in all you do, because I know you and I've been following you for a long time. And guys, if you aren't following Amy on LinkedIn, you absolutely should. Her content is absolutely amazing. So it's Amy Misnick, M-I-S-N-I-K. Follow her on LinkedIn. But how do you get your mind right? Yeah. So what are your daily habits that keep your mindset in the right place? And thank you for that, Tom. I appreciate it because it is hard. I think, you know, some of the feedback I've gotten and and actually yesterday, an old boss of mine was just appointed as CEO of a new company. And I sent him a message on Monday. It was his first day. And, and one of the things he said to me was, I love your energy. That's one of the things that I really remember about working with you. Like, thanks for this message. It means a lot. And it's one of those things that I show up in this way and people are like, wow, you're, you just are this way. And no, I'm not. <laughs> a mindset is, is hard, right? Like you said, it's not something that just comes easily. It may be perceived that way, right? I show up this way, but it's something that I built over a really long period of time. And it's something that takes practice and it's a daily habit. So you ask, how, how do I get my mind right? It's, starts with intention and it's something that you do every day. I think of it just like preventative health and wellness, right? So how do you stay fit and healthy? How do you how do you practice anything? It's really incorporating it into your daily life. So I'm a big fan of Dr. Andrew Huberman and his protocols. So I mean, I won't go down too much of a rabbit hole because I think that could be an episode on its own. But some of the things that I do that I've learned from him are starting the night before. So sleep. That's my number one daily habit to really get my mind right is sleep hygiene. And I follow the three, two, one rule, which I got from Dr. Andrew Huberman. And that's no food three hours before sleep, no liquids, especially alcohol, two hours before sleep. And really no alcohol in general helps me sleep a lot better and then no screens one hour before bed, or if you you have to, uh, use blue light blocker glasses. They look really cool, by the way. I have a pair of them. They're bright red, and they look ridiculous. My husband loves them. Uh, but um, that has really been a, a habit that helps me get a solid seven to nine hours of sleep. And then really the screens, starting my day without a screen. So I used to be the person that literally like rolls over grabs my phone and starts scrolling through emails, which is terrible, like mm. totally guilty. I used to do that. I don't anymore. Now I get up, I meditate and I go for a walk outside. Like that is a habit that I consistently do every single day, no matter what the weather is. And, you know, based on Dr. Huberman's research, and, you know, we have a lot of scientific uh, viewers and listeners uh, for this podcast, you know, that has direct impact on cortisol as well as melatonin levels and direct impact on circadian rhythms and your sleep patterns. And I will say 
when I don't do meditation and walking outside to get direct sunlight, it, it impacts my day and my sleep. I notice a difference when I don't do that. So try these things, see how they impact you. And, you know, for me, it really sets my day off right. And when I don't do it, I just notice my day doesn't go as well. Mm. And it's funny because, guys, I'm a huge Andrew Huberman fan as well. And I, I follow almost all the same things that Amy's talking about. You've heard me talk about it before on the podcast, but, and so does my wife. So like literally it, we look ridiculous, but we walk around at night with these stupid like blue blocker glasses on yeah, because it really does make a difference. And, um, and I see you're wearing an aura ring. Are you wearing an yes. aura ring? Oh yeah. So yep. I track I'm my a sleep. big aura ring guy too. And Amy, will, I'm sure you notice a difference, right? In mm -hmm. your numbers. When oh, yeah. you slack on these habits, you'll see a difference in your readiness score, in your resilience, in your HRV balance. Mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely, all these little things have an impact. Yeah. And the, the, the stress that you were under on a regular basis can really drastically be eliminated through proper habits. And that's where your mindset starts to get better and better. Again, there's other things that you have to also do like meditation and, and being intentional and all that other stuff, but there's physical things that I believe in. And I, I, I know you do, and there's research behind it. So yeah, let's just say we, so you, you, you follow your habits and, and everything's great, right? And you have a great mindset and you start your day and you're on top of the world. Everything's great. But then boom, bad news, setback, sky's falling. It's, it's life. It happens. Yeah. We're not, we're going to, we're going to get hit and punched in the stomach. So then how do you handle that? And how do you get your, keep your mind right after a setback? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Every day, right? No, no day is a perfect day, right? That's life. Things happen. Um, before I get into what I do, I want to tell a quick story. Do you know who Roger Federer is? I, I yeah. hope so. Okay. Of right. Course. So yeah. one of the greatest tennis players in history, he gave a commencement speech at Dartmouth just this past year. And what he talked about was throughout his career, he played over 1,500 singles matches during that career. He won 80% of them. That's a pretty awesome record. What he mentioned was, although he won about 80% of those, he lost 54% of the points that he played. So imagine losing in tennis more than half of the points you played. So while you're playing these games, you're losing point by point. The majority of the points you're losing how frustrating is that, right? Like mm -hmm. you see tennis players throw their rackets, get so frustrated, but you have to like get your head back in the game and win the match, right? And still, he's the greatest player of all times, one of the greatest players of all times. So he talks about mindset and getting over that. So processing really quickly that setback, that, you know, oh, that gut punch, right? So like everything's going good. The match is going great. And then you lose a point. Mm. How do you get your head back in the game, right? And win that match and then ultimately become the greatest player of time. So that story really stuck with me from his commencement speech because look at how amazing, you know, his career has been, even though he lost the majority, right? 54% of those points individually. So I think it's a good reminder. And so when I have that gut punch or that setback or something's like, oh gosh, that just really sucked. You know, first is, is pause, mm -hmm. like pause and respond instead of react. Right. So sometimes the reaction might be like throwing the tennis racket, but that's okay. An emotional response is, is okay. You got to like get it out sometimes like scream, be mad, whatever that is, have that reaction, but then respond and move forward in a positive direction and focus on what you can control. I think we all know setbacks are going to happen. It's life. But as Ted Lasso says, one of my favorite characters of all time is be a goldfish, right? They have a memory of 10 seconds. So forget about it and move forward. So acknowledge it, process it, but don't get stuck. 
And then I think the last thing that I would give some advice to folks is, is have perspective. So one of the questions that I like to think about is, is this going to matter in five years, mm. right? So in the moment, things feel really heavy, but as we reflect back and look back at some of those things, they, they really aren't that big of a deal in the moment. So true. There's so much to unpack there. First off, yeah. if you haven't watched Ted Lasso, absolutely like put that on your list. It's one of the greatest yeah. shows of all time. Oh, yeah. Um, number two, I can't believe you told the Roger Federer story because I was listening to a podcast this morning. Yeah. And my let told the same story. No way. About Roger oh my Federer. Gosh. That's exact awesome. same story. So we're yeah. obviously we're traveling in the same circles. Yeah. But the other thing is I was and I don't know where I got this. Maybe it was some Instagram video that I came across, but it they, there was research done on tennis players, believe mm -hmm. it or not. And it was to identify the mindset of the most successful tennis players. And it wasn't that they just kept repeating positive affirmations to themselves per se, but they all, the, the top tennis players all displayed this sense of gratitude for being able to mm. play the sport. So even when they're out there, they just kept telling themselves how much they were enjoying what they were doing and how grateful they were yeah. to be able to do it. And even when they would lose a point, they would say to themselves, okay, well, you're going to get that back. That's not like you, you're going to, you know, and, and, you know, we're having fun now we're, you know, we're out here. This is what we, this is what we trained for that kind of thing. So it wasn't just about, you know, overcoming the negative in your mind. It was embracing the moment, living in gratitude and enjoying the experience is what pulled them through it and made them more successful. Yeah. I love that. I think Simone Biles talked about that recently. I don't know if you saw her Netflix special um, about emotional health or emotional kind of health and wellness and mm -hmm. having fun with the sport. And that was one of the reasons in Tokyo in 2020, she stepped away. And one of the reasons that got her back was remembering her love of the sport and having fun and enjoying the process, not focusing on the outcome. And so yep. I love I think that ties to the tennis piece as well, which which makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, and and getting back to I had mentioned the idea of the, you know, the, we all go through this negative thought loop where yeah. we are can be our own worst enemy. And we let these negative thoughts creep in. And sometimes it just becomes this um this downward spiral of, 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 of negativity where we, we have this, this internal negative dialogue. So how do you control that? And are you aware of that? And what kind of habits do you have as it relates to that? Yeah, it's, it's tough because it's easy to get stuck in that. And sometimes you, you keep digging yourself deeper, right? As, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, one gratitude, I, I love that example you brought up is to remembering your, your why, um, but sticking with the facts, right? So one of the things that I do is writing it down, right? What are the, what are the things that are in my mind? Getting it down on paper helps because when you see it on paper, you realize what's a story versus a fact. So writing it down first and then asking yourself, is this a fact or is this a story? Mm. And then, you know, I think one of the things that you know, it reminds me of a story that actually Walt Disney was fired very early in his career because his boss told him he lacked imagination and didn't have any good ideas, right? That That's just <laughs> mind blowing, right? I love it. It's crazy. And so I used to, th you know, old Amy, when I received feedback, I, I took that as a personal attack against me as a, as a person, as, as a human, right? So like, I suck at this, like, so Walt Disney could have taken that as Hey, I'm not creative, but thank goodness he didn't. And instead, the different way of thinking about that is labeling the behavior or the action and focusing how you can improve versus you as the person, right? So instead of thinking, I'm not creative, it's, hey, I didn't maybe have enough time to think through my ideas, 
Mm. Right. So you're labeling the behavior and not you as the person or your character and who you are as an individual. And instead using that feedback as fuel to push you forward. So imagine, you know, if Disney didn't believe he was actually creative, you know, we wouldn't have had our favorite childhood movies and toys or, you know, families may have saved thousands of dollars going to Disney World. Um, but we would have lost irreplaceable joy and wonder if he would have taken that feedback personally. So I think those mindset shifts combined with one of the things I do is write down when I'm really stuck, some of those thoughts um, to get them out of my head and onto paper are two of the things that I do to help get out of that negative loop. I love it. And, you know, we all struggle with it. I mean, every one of us, it's a natural thing. So I think the better that we can get at being strategic in how we handle it and just recognize it and then be able to pivot from it um, and, and really change our mindset. And I love what you just said. I think those are great tips. Um, I think it just makes such a big difference in your overall mindset. So that's the internal. What about the external? There's so much stimulus. There's so much noise. There's, there's news and there's social media and there's all this stuff. And, and there's, we're so polarized as a nation and the election and politics and all this stuff. So how do you keep a positive mindset with all of this noise that's happening? Yeah. It's especially now, and and I don't know if it just amplified during COVID because we're all stuck, mm. right, in one place, and then technology just seemed to amplify, and the world of virtual work, you know, three x. Um, but it, it comes down to two things: really setting boundaries and cutting out the noise. You know, really, you have control over that. So for me. I'm really intentional about what I let into my mental space and my mental space is also my physical space. So I limit exposure to negative news, social media, if it people. Um, And so really that's just setting boundaries and turning it off. So if something is not giving me a good feeling, I'm just not going to watch it. I'm going to turn the TV off or I'm going to say, Hey, this, this relationship isn't really giving me a positive vibe. Like, no, thanks. You know, I'm just going to walk away. It's pretty simple. I think people overcomplicate it, but just turn it off. And I think people get stuck. I think people think they can't turn it off. It's like, well, I've been friends with this person for so long. It's like, but yeah, but they make you miserable. Yeah. Right. So there's certain times, there's things that need to be cut out of Mm -hmm. our lives, whether we like it or not, whether it's easy or not. Um, and that, I think that that's just such an important piece of the whole mental health equation, surround yourself with the right people and with the right stimulus. I, I just, I don't, I try not to watch the news. I mean, I want to be informed, but I just don't want to be brought down, Yes. you know, and social media. Like I really am very careful with what it is that I'm consuming because it could take you into this whole nother place. Yes. You know, know. Um, it really can. Let's talk about medical affairs. You've done yeah. everything. You know, you've been an MSL and an MSL leader in different levels. And so you've seen it all. So what yeah. would you say is should be the mindset for MSLs and people that are in the medical affairs world? Yeah, I think in medical affairs, you know, I've seen a lot of growth mindsets, right? It, there's incredibly intelligent, talented people, teams and mindsets in the medical affairs world. And these people already have, you know, such growth mindsets, which is incredible. They want to learn and grow and dive deep into the science. And I think my advice would be to continue that. And my challenge would be is to cultivate more curiosity in areas that are uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is, you know, I think the science is where medical affairs teams typically hone into and are really excited about and are comfortable. And that's where you see them dive in to learn. And what I would say is maybe dive into topics where you don't normally go. And so that could be learning more about the business or strategy or business planning and understanding how medical fits into that part of the business or research and development, learn how 
your insights and what you're doing in the field can best support R&D or business development or the broader organization and the strategy of where they're going. So, you know, my my advice would be where you feel uncomfortable is where you should be more curious and have a growth mindset. And so that's where I think you can have the most impact mm -hmm. and where you can really have a stronger growth mindset. And I'll tell you, looking at your career and looking at your success, you've obviously figured out the system and the formula. So when you look, if if someone came to you, yeah. um, whether it's an MSL or an MSL leader, and they said, hey, looking back, what was the mindset for success in your career? How did you approach your career? How did you find the ability to get promoted so many times and to do all these great things? Do you think that that all stemmed from having the right mindset and attitude? Yes, I I would absolutely agree with that statement because I think I I had a mindset that, and I still do, is that anything is possible mm. and you it should be the same for you. You can achieve anything that you set your mind to with hard work, dedication, and really the right support and and relationships. So I think if you see something that you're interested in and put yourself out there, work hard for it and deliver on it, you you can accomplish anything. Do you think this is something that can be taught? Like are, are people yeah. like either born with it or some people better at it than others? I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. I think I'd say 50-50 on that. So I think part of part of my mindset, you know, and how I show up, I think part of this is taught. I think I'm very fortunate that I, you know, my parents taught me this in a way. Um, so I'm very grateful for them that I grew up with this mindset uh, instilled in me in a really young age. But for that reason, it, I think it can be taught at any age. And I think part of it is, you know, supporting others, your team, surrounding yourself with people who have this mindset, who can influence it. And then the other part is you as an individual owning it, having some self-reflection and taking ownership to work on it yourself every single day and change your perspective and creating habits to shift your mindset and think differently until it becomes a habit and just how you think and what you do. I agree with that. I think that some people were brought up mm -hmm. with a, a different mindset. Some people were brought up in a family of warriors and, yeah. and people that are anxious and people that are glass half full mm -hmm. or glass half empty, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Whereas some people, like you said, you were raised with a mindset of glass half full and then it's easier. But I feel like, and I agree, I think the good news is even if you were raised a certain way and it doesn't come, this doesn't come naturally to you, when you adopt the right habits and the right daily practices and you think about what you think about and you control and you practice and you put into effect a systematic approach to going through your day with the right attitude and the right mindset, you're going to see a tremendous difference, I think. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And it can be learned. Mm. Absolutely. Every day. It's it's similar to changing behaviors, lifestyle modifications. It over time becomes just a part of who you are and what you do. And you don't even have to think about it. How do you stay motivated? So let's just say you're cruising along and you have all these big goals, but you're not always seeing things happen on the daily to to make you feel like you're making the progress that you want to make. So how do you how do you keep the right mindset and stay motivated? Yeah. So I think it comes down to and and this is something I actually learned from something that was shared from Warren Buffett he got from his dad and it comes to your your why and that's either intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation and your inner or outer scorecard. Mm -hmm. And the outer scorecard is, you know, I'll, I'll call it before Amy was really 
living your life based on kind of external things? Is it status, accolades, recognition, achievement, or I have to get to this level or this job title or this salary, right? Um, you're working, working for achievement versus internal motivation, intrinsic, or that inner scorecard, which is really your values, your principles, standards, and performance. And you wrote this in your book, actually. It's one of uh, the things, you know, progress motivation um, from your first chapter on mindset, which I loved, was really celebrating progress that aligns to your inner scorecard. So combining what I learned from Warren Buffett, he got from his dad, and what I read in your book, it, I loved, was really celebrating small milestones along the way that align to what your core values are and what you really stand for. So when I get stuck or it's like you feel like you're not making progress, going back to your why, that inner scorecard of what really matters to you and focusing on what are the, the smaller steps that I've taken to make progress to reach that bigger goal. Man, that's so powerful. I love all that. And I thank you for for referring to the book. I I, I as you guys could tell, you know, Amy and I think the same. Like I do believe all this. And I do believe that I know it's hard. I know that especially now, people are going through very difficult times. Some people are out of work, some people are struggling. And there's a there's a lot of people that I talk to that really need to get their mind back and get their mind right. And I just feel like if you can focus more on the progress each day, that's going to keep you going. Celebrate those small wins. Be grateful for what you have. It could always be worse. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's the, you know, going back to the Roger Federer and the focus on, you know, trying to enjoy the journey. As you said, the why makes a big difference. So um, what would be last kind of piece of advice that you have for people as we talk about some of the difficulties and, you know, people that may be going through a difficult time right now, any like last piece of advice you have for those folks? Oh my gosh. I, I think it's, it's hard for people who are going through a really hard time. Like for me to say, I promise it'll get better. Like it's so hard. Cause when you're in it, like it doesn't matter what anyone can say to you. It's not going to help. I think taking it a day at a time, and focusing on one thing, like what's one thing that you can do today from this podcast, like pick one thing that really resonates with you and find an accountability partner. I'll, I'll be your accountability partner. I'd love to be. Reach out to me on LinkedIn, send me a message, tell me what you want to do today and how you're going to shift your mindset. What's one thing you can be grateful for? What's one thing you learn today or one thing you're going to do differently and how you're going to think differently or change your life. Just one thing, one small habit. That's it. Um, to take one step forward, you know, to change and focus on that because me saying, Oh, it's going to be better. I don't think that's going to help anyone. I know it will be, but me telling you that I don't think will make anyone feel better. So, you know, I'd love to be anyone's accountability partner to help, you know, build a growth mindset or help change them, have a more positive outlook, uh, whatever that may be for you and what that means for you. I'd love to be that for you. So send me a message and I'd be happy to help in any way I can. That's such a great way to close this out. And and it's so true. I mean, pain's temporary. We know that. But when you're going through it, you, you know, you don't want to hear, you just, you yeah. need something to happen to make you feel better. And the only way something that's going to happen to make you feel better is you have to take an action. Yeah. So I love that, that sense of direction and just pick one thing. And after you do that, that'll give you such a great feeling of, Hey, I'm making progress. I'm working towards something. I'm getting my game back. I'm getting back in the game. So, Hey, you know, if, if you follow, um, guys like Dave Portnoy, <laughs> what's his expression? Brick by brick. How did he build that huge empire that is Barstool Sports and all those other things? It's, mm -hmm. it's brick by brick. So, you know, take small steps. Um, and don't forget the daily habits that we talked about, because I think that that is such a really critical piece of this whole equation, for sure. Yeah. Amy, and you're I the best. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it.
This was so much fun. Guys, if you got value out of this, please share it with others. Um, as always, I appreciate all your support. Thank you for um, continuing to uh, support this podcast. And thank you for all of those that listened to the very first episode with Amy and the people that are still listening today. You guys are the best. We'll see you next time.